In this tutorial, I'll be talking you through how to make the PCB for the egg timer. To start with, you need to make the circuit, which is drawn on, as you can see on the screen, or on um, week two. Some of the things to point out are uh, the power supply should be six volts. The switch, to find the switch that you need, is under switches, and it's the single pole, single throw switch. Okay, so under the latching switch, that one there is what you need. Uh, normal resistor, normal resistor. This one here is called a potentiometer. So under resistors, you should see it's the third one down, potentiometer. You just grab that in and bring it across here. It will say a percentage on it, and that's obviously because it's like a dimmer switch, so it's turning it around. So you, you don't worry about that. It, it says whatever percentage. You can adjust that while it's playing. Uh, another normal resistor, another normal resistor. You've got two LEDs, okay, which you've got to find fine. Uh, the buzzer should be under audio, so if you look under audio, the buzzer's just at the top there. The 505 is under integrated circuits, so about halfway down integrated circuits, and that's the one at the top. Okay, and then you've got these three capacitors here. You will notice that if you look at the capacitors, two of them these two here have got positives next to them, so they use the electrolytic capacitors, and this one down here is just using the one at the top. Okay, now one of the things that's a bit strange is how this connects from here to here, because pins 6 and 7 are connected up, but then they run together. So to do that, if you go to Project, Circuit Symbols, and then under Connectors, you should see Rail. Try that again, Rail, okay, and then you can just draw a line from there and connect it up there okay now if i push play on here you should see okay um that the led goes and depending on the percentage mine just beep there okay what it needs to do etc okay so if we left it long enough that it should beep the other led should go as well so i'm just going to play stop on there so now i've got the circuit complete i'm happy with that do make sure you change all the values okay so just make sure that as you're going through just double check that all the numbers kind of match up and also the units as well so you've not got your nano farads models up with your micro farads okay so just double check that they're all okay when we're happy let's we're going to start building the pcb so I'm going to use this button at the top here, okay? If it's shaded out, just remember to push the stop button, you're probably still running the simulation. So you click on there, okay? We're going to go next. We want to do these single-sided thin tracks. And we must click the button to say, allow me to customize. So we're going to single-sided thin, allow me to customize, and then next. We're not going to worry too much about the size. We can actually um, just sort of manually adjust it by grabbing the corners of the board and make it small and large, that sort of thing. So next. Uh, what we will do here, this is just going to list all the components that we've got. We are actually going to take out the switch. So if you've got your switch connected, if it's ticked, just untick that. Okay, because I know it's on our circuit, but actually on the board, we don't have a switch. So just untick that and say next. We're going to go with the standard size pads and next. And we're going to unselect the automatically placed components on the board. So just untick that. Next. And the final step is to convert. Okay, so we should be left with our board and then all the kind of components that we need. Okay, so we're going to start by bringing in uh, the power. So we're going to bring that in there. Okay, and the next thing I'll place on here, if I hover over the components, you should tell me what they are. So this is a one uh, microfarad. So I'm going to place that kind of near the top up there. Okay. Next thing, I want my uh, 330, so this is my 330 here, orange, orange, brown. So I'm going to bring that one in here, and I'm just going to spin, now which one, there are two. Um, right, actually I'm going to just put that, oh, control Z, I'm just going to put that back for the time being, because there are actually two. It's easy to place on the things that are kind of unique to start with. Let's bring in the um, potentiometer which is just realized by the fact that it says 100k there rather than one m is the wrong if i've got the wrong component i can change at this point if i just double click on there and just change that value to one m okay there we go so that's the right now the right component um 270 you can see that one there that's the the kind of red violet resistor i can bring that next to it there the 555 timer I'm going to bring in, I'm going to rotate that around because I want the slot here to face the right. So I'm just going to use the little rotate tool up there. Bring that over there. The um, active buzzer I'm going to bring up here. 
Now I want the positive leg pointing towards the right, so I'm just going to rotate that to the left. Has that done that? Let's have a look. Where's there? Is there a positive on there? Let's see if I, have a, if I hover over it. That's saying it's pin one. That's saying pin two. We may need to rotate that, but that's roughly in the right place. Let's have a look. Okay, so let's place the uh, other capacitor here. This is the uh, 470. So I'm going to bring that down here. Okay, the 100 NF. Okay, I can bring here. So just next to the 270, because one of the pins is going to go into there. That's fine. Um, do, do, do. Right, I've got 100K resistor here. So I'm going to bring that up and then I'm going to rotate that. Let's see, when I want to go that way. Yep, that looks right. And now hopefully from there I should be able to work out which one of these is which. Let's have a look. Right. Okay. So this resistor here okay is connecting to the led and up to here so this is what i'm going to bring up to this bit here so i'm going to move this resistor here and i'm going to spin that around let's have a look oh uh, that looks happier that way what i'm trying to do the green lines are showing me where the actual electrons need to go for this to work so they're kind of giving me clues saying that that bit should connect to this bit okay so i'm going to bring that in there about there and i'm going to bring this led and bring that to about here. Okay, this can come a bit further down. I do want to try and make, eventually make my board kind of as small as possible. Um, and what I'm trying to look is where kind of lines overlap and things like that, if I can spin them around. So that looks a bit happier, doesn't it? It's not kind of twisted on itself. Looking at these ones here, this looks kind of, these are crossed over. So if I can spin that around, so they're not crossing over, there we go. That component looks a lot happier. That can just run one wire up to there and one wire up to there. Okay, so I've got a 330 I need to place here. So I'm going to place that there. And then I need to place my last LED, which is going to come down in this corner here. And I'm just going to rotate that. You'll see when you click on an item, you should see there's a kind of flat bit there on the LED to tell me that's the, the negative end there. So I just want to rotate that to the right. Okay, so we're looking a little bit like that. Um, yeah, we might need to bring things a little bit close together. So I'm just kind of moving things into that bottom right corner. Um, obviously if I'm, I'm making a PCB the, the smaller I can make it the better if I'm going to make sort of hundreds of these or whatever it's a uh, it could have a huge kind of financial difference there to my my company if I was making lots and lots of these um, so let's bring that into there that can come down so I'm just moving everything sort of slowly slowly uh, and then I can adjust the actual board size and make that that bit smaller okay so what I'm gonna do now a couple of things so I can see a little bit clearer what I'm doing before I start actually putting the tracks in. I'm going to get rid of all these labels, these ones that say sort of D1 and BZ1, because they're not actually helping me do anything. Okay, so I can kind of get rid of those. So to get rid of them, just click on there and either push your button, your delete button, your keyboard, or just this little delete button up here. Okay, so I'm just getting rid of anything that says sort of R2 that's not particularly useful. Okay, things that do have that are useful are the... Um, the actual labels for the resistor so I know which one's which. So I, I do keep those, but the the ones that are just telling me what the kind of component labels are, I'm just going to get rid of those. So anything that sort of says R4 or C1 or anything like that, okay, I can move that, get rid of that. It's not really helping me, it's just extra information there that's going to get in the way of what we're doing. Okay, so 470. Move that there. It's my 270 label. Okay, now I've just realised that I'm kind of fighting against the fact that you can actually see the components. So instead of using the real world view, I'm just going to come down here to the unpopulated view. Okay, so again, that makes it a little bit easier for me to see what else I can get rid of. And I can move the actual labels directly on top 
other components so I can see exactly what I've got, uh, what's going where. So that's my 100, I can go into there. This is my 470 up there. 313 is going across. My 6 volts I seem to have lost over there. I'm just going to bring that in and get rid of that battery one. Okay, so that's doing pretty good in terms of uh, the components and things that are there. I could probably bring it a little bit closer in. Um, but I'm just going to kind of, oh here we go, I've got a little label that snuck off the end there, so I'm just going to move this one here and bring that in, and that one there and get rid of. There we go. Okay, so I think if, rather than the LEDs, which we can see I've got labels on, I think everything else um, is kind of labeled on there. I might want to change that. If I want to change a label to actually use it, I can just type the caption in. So I'm going to say that's my 5 for 5. That will give me an extra label. And then I can just get rid of the initial one. Okay, so now that's my 5 for 5. Um, if I want to put an extra one on myself, I can just go to AA. So if I want to say active buzzer here, go to AA, select where I want to actually type. Action. So this is the active buzzer. And I need to put this on the component side. Okay, so active buzzer component side, and that'll be the writing in there. If it's too big, um, I think I can very much select it. Move it. Um, okay. it seems to let me want to change the size of that, so we'll leave that for the time being. If we figure out how to change it, we'll change that in just a little bit. Okay, so let's start to look at connecting up the actual tracks. Okay, for the tracks, we're going to be using this um, the track tool up here, which is the red line. Okay, and we're just going to be following it from one path to the other. So we're going to start on the um, the negative rail, okay, so that's here, and we're going to connect up as we go along. So, right, let's have a look. So this is obviously is the negative part of the LED, so I can connect that into there and then onto here. This is going to need to turn around, so I'm going to spin that around there. Okay, so I've got a nice kind of run through of the the negative from there to there, going through here as well. I know it's saying it should connect up to here, but actually I can run it through there and you actually use the, the negative rail coming through here as that. Okay, so starting here up to the red. Okay, I'm just gonna draw a line from there down the way. And we tend to draw, we tend to sort of draw in straight lines. Okay, so if something's not straight, I can just go escape, use the um, white arrow and kind of move things down a little bit to make them kind of as neat as I can. Uh, that label seems to have snuck off up there, so I've just moved it. Okay, I'm just going to move that down a little bit neater as well. There we go. So I've got a nice sort of straight line through there. So back to the red line tool, from the centre there, centre of there, and through to the centre of that one. Okay, I'm just going to push escape, because uh, otherwise it will, it will want to keep drawing. Now I'm going to go from there all the way around to the negative uh, end of the buzzer here. Okay, so let's have just a quick check on where that positive is going into. Okay, so actually I'm just going to pause on that a little bit there to start with. And I'm just going to kind of work my way. Uh, let's connect up this one here. Okay, so I'm going to connect from here to here. There we go, to connect that one up. Again, I'm just pushing escape. And why well, I'm just taking the pause, I'm not 100% sure which way around. It's not kind of clearly telling me which is the positive and negative at the moment. So I'm actually just, just paused on that a little bit. Hopefully by the time I get around the other way, we'll figure exactly out what we're doing. Okay, so going to the positive end. So the positive end here, uh, there's a rail that runs underneath this component, okay? So it's quite a useful little trick there is that you can actually, even though the resistor's there, I can actually run paths underneath that. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to actually line it up a little bit with the um, with that LED. If it let me select it, there we go. So I'm just going to bring that in straight. Okay, so that my positive rail will go through the kind of middle of this bit here. Okay, so I'm just going to move it down a little bit further. Okay, so while I'm here, I can actually connect these two up. Okay, so that's going to connect up to there. Again, just push the escape. Um, this one here is going to connect from there to there. 
So I'm just going to connect to this one. Now you can't really do diagonals. It doesn't do very diagonals very nicely. So you're better to kind of just go sort of straight. Well, oh, there you go. This that's a not bad diagonal actually. So I'll take take that back. Uh, I'm just going to move this um, back to the white arrow. I'm just going to move this a little bit closer in. Actual component. Oh. A little bit fiddly sometimes because it selects the back of it when you're actually trying to select the um, the component. But just uh, patience. Here we go. So I'm just going to bring that in. Here we go. Fourth time lucky. And just bring that in there. So that's going to connect from there to there. Okay, so that's now connected up to there. This is going to go around here, and we're going to use this to actually connect into the positive end of the um, active buzzer. Right, so let's see if I can figure out. Okay, I'm just having a look at the board, and it appears this is the this is a positive pin here. Let's have a look. Actually, so that's ground um, powers there. Okay, so looking at the five for five, the pin eight. Remember the the pins go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So sort of horseshoe round there. Uh, this is the this is the positive pin here, this is the power pin. So that's going into this one here. So this is my positive pin. So pin number one is the positive. So I'm gonna turn this around. So I'm just gonna select that component there because I want it to be that way around. Okay, even though that sort of mangled those lines a little bit, it's actually gonna help us out because I can use the positive from here and actually wire that through to there. So rather than trying to fight that positive through here and round here, I can kind of take this on the outside. So I'm just going to make the board a little bit bigger. And I'm going to run the wire from here, kind of up and round, and into the positive there. Okay, so we've got the positive into there. Um, so, da -da -da -da. Okay, what's next? Right, so looking here, that's going to connect to... So these two bits here are going to connect up, and this is going to connect to that pin there. So starting from the negative end of the um, the buzzer, I'm just going to come down. A uh, little diagonal. Oh, maybe a little bit more of a diagonal. And into there. Okay, so that's now connected up into there. This second pin is going to come to this one here, okay? So I need to connect that. Oh, uh, I just made a little mistake there. If you make a mistake, Control and Z to undo things. So I just need to draw that one back in again. Okay, so I've connected that pin back up, push escape, otherwise it'll keep drawing from that same point. And now I need to draw this one up here, for kind of going parallel with this one, but it's going to come into this pin here. So I can start there and kind of go down here and then just follow that parallel across into there. Okay, so that's my pin two done. Pin number one here is going to connect to that pin there. Okay, so from here, I can just sort of parallel it through if I can, if it'll let me. I can go relatively close to the wires, but obviously I don't want to go too close in terms of when I was actually etching it out. Um, if the wires are too close, they'll have to kind of, they, they might merge across here. I might get kind of contamination of the um, electrons going from one to the other. So just a little bit careful there. Okay, so let's have a look at my other pins. Uh, let's jump across to pin number seven. So that's this one here. And this is going to connect over to this capacitor here. So I'm going to run a wire from here through the center of that one and up to pin number seven. Um, from here, I'm going to run a wire from the 270 straight down the way. 
Okay, I'm just pushing escape to say that's done. Uh, the other end of that is going to connect to here. So that just goes from there to there. That's a nice and easy one. Again, just escape. Um, okay. These three, let's have a look. Now, this one, this positive of the one microfarad needs to connect to this pin here, but it doesn't want to go through that one. So I need to kind of just loop this a little bit around the way. I may need to bring this back a little bit. Uh, let's see how we get on. It's because that's I want to connect. Can you see how the green lines are crossing over there? And this is where you've got to be careful. So what I can try and do is I'm going to run this underneath that one round here, and then that'll allow me to go straight from there to there. Okay, so actually I'm just going to move that a little bit to start with. Uh, I'm just going to bring that one down so it's a nice little straight run because that's going to connect into there eventually anyway. In fact, I'm going to just bring these ones down a little bit. Uh, now, when you move things down, sometimes it works quite nicely. Other times it will go a bit uh, horribly wrong. So just, just kind of go easy when you're moving things. Again, if you make a mistake, you can do a control Z. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so I've just moved that to there. Right. I'm just going to finally move that one down. Okay, we're going to go with that. So I'm going to run there into there. So that's a nice easy one. And I'm going to run this green line here. I'm going to run that underneath there and around there. So I'm going to start at this end, kind of go to here, up to there. Uh, just have a little jink around that corner. There we go. Okay. So where are we connecting? Let's have a look. That connects nicely over to there via that one. That's connecting nicely to there. Right, what else have we got? Okay, so having a look here, the uh, positive needs to link together underneath it. So it's going to use this space underneath this resistor. And I'm going to run that across into this pin here. Okay, so running from pin number four, I'm going to run a little wire going kind of, uh, da, 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 da. let's have a look, so it's going to go under there, does that bring that straight across, let's have a look, right, okay, so I'm just going to bring it down to there, come down here a little bit, because I want it to be under here, because I want it to connect to this bit here, so I'm just sort of, sort of weaving my way across, and that's going to connect into there. Okay, so let's figure out where we got. So this one here needs to connect. Oh, let's just control Z. Right. Oh, I've managed just to undo that bit there. So we'll just quickly draw that back in again. So I started at pin number four from the center of there, across, down a little bit, across down a little bit there, and into there. Just make sure you push the escape button, that's what I forgot to do there. I'm just going to connect this one up to there, and again push escape, and let's just have a quick double check and see what everything is connected up to. So I do need to connect together, there was two pins that were connected, um, right let's have a look. Okay, so we'll start on the positive, work our way around, just check that we've got everything. So starting at the positive, uh, duh, 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 duh. so going through here, now that needs to connect up the way to there, okay? So I need a line in there, so from there going up the way to there, and following that around, so that's going to connect to th the 330 into the 10k, 330, following that way all, all the way around there to the active buzzer. From the negative end, sorry, from the other end of the active buzzer, that's going to loop into here. Just connecting all the pins together. Now, there should be two pins that are connected together, so I'm just going to check the circuit diagram. It was pin 6 and pin 7 were connected into the 270, so let's just check that. So pin 6... One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Right, these two here need to be connected together. So I'm just going to join a line from there to there. And that's that six to seven. Okay, those two are connected together. 
Now, I've just, ah, here we go. I've got to get this one here round to that one there. Okay, so I'm just going to connect a wire from here off the way round into there. Okay. And my final connection is linking two of the pins in the 505 together. Okay, so I need to link together pin number eight and number four, because you can see that green line there. So I'm just going to draw up. Okay. Do you remember to use that escape button? I forgot there again. And okay, escape. And I've got to just connect that one and it's just going to run underneath that component. Okay. And we try and use that a lot just to sort of allow us to sort of not have to sort of jump over wires. If you do have to jump over wires, we sometimes use um, a zero a zero ohm resistor. So basically it's just a piece of wire, like a jump wire, and we'll actually place that if we do want to jump things over. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. A uh, couple little things I will say. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to push the escape. So when you're finished this, I want you to... Now actually, the active buzzer label doesn't really hasn't worked for me at all. So I'm just going to move that down to there. And what I want you to do is actually just put your name in there. Okay. So if you put your name on there, then I know it's yours. Okay. You just pop that in the corner. Um, there are a couple of uh, holes in here, mounting holes. So we can actually put those in. Okay. So if you go to project and uh, let's see if I can remember where they are. Underneath. Doo -doo -doo -doo. If you go to the PCB components, you've got various things there, the track, the electrical wire, um, you can change the copper board and all sorts of things. And under here, there should be um, some mounting holes, if I can remember where they are. No, I can't seem to find them, but there you go. There's a little, little challenge for you. See if you can find them. They should be in here somewhere. They're called um, mounting holes, and you can put one just about there, okay? And that'll be fine, just so you can... Well, we always try and put a strain hole through there. Okay, I'm just going to move that across. Uh, just realised that should actually say 9 volts, shouldn't it? So, um, is that going to let me change that label? No, we'll just leave that as is. Okay, hopefully that's been useful. When you've made that, you can now upload that for the batch.